High blood pressure is one of the most widely spread diseases in our country. It's hard to believe that about 60 million people have high blood pressure. That's considering that there's only about 120 million adults in our country. One out of every two adults has high blood pressure. You have 100 people in the room, you have 50 people then who would have high blood pressure. It hardly seems possible it's such a natural, national epidemic. Physicians used to think that high blood pressure was primarily a problem with too much salt in the diet. But when Dr. James I. Conner of the U.S. Department of Agriculture did his study, he selected men and women who were on a normal American diet, 43% total calories and fat, normal amount of cholesterol, and their normal amount of salt, which was 10 grams of salt a day, about a third of an ounce of salt a day. And he decided not to change their salt, give them exactly the amount of salt they'd been eating, only to change their fat. He brought their fat from 43% down to 25%. And he was very careful not to change your calories. He didn't want anyone to lose weight because the first thing a physician says is lose weight, cut down salt, your high blood pressure will go away. 10 days after they're on the diet and all they did was reduce the fat from 43% to 25%, everyone's blood pressure dropped 10%. That means if your top number was 160, you'd go down to 144, practically in a normal range, from an abnormal range. And if your top number was 100, that's certainly not acceptable, it would go down to 90 in your bottom number, which could be acceptable. So the difference between normal and abnormal, in just 10 days, Dr. Icon was able to do by not touching salt at all. No one lost weight. They all had the normal amount of salt. He kept them on that for 40 days, and the blood pressure stayed down. And one of the interesting things about the study is that he noticed that the platelets, the little cells that create clotting in the body, the sticking together of the platelets reduced 50% when he cut the fat down just from 43% to 25%. And that made him very happy because the new evidence had just come out that diabetic retinopathy, that's the problem that diabetics have where they go blind, where the retina bleeds and so on. Diabetic retinopathy, the severity, is correlated to the amount of platelets sticking together, platelet aggregation. So if he could reduce platelet aggregation by 50%, he could probably reduce the damage to diabetics' eyes. He considered that more important than the lowering of the blood pressure. Now, of course, he only went down to 25%. You can imagine how low you can reduce the platelets sticking together down at an 8% fat diet. Well, the diabetic specialists didn't recommend, of course, reducing fat. They just gave people aspirin and other drugs to try and reduce platelet stickiness. Diet, I guess, is not an acceptable program among physicians yet. When Dr. Iacono increased the fats in the diet, all the blood pressures went back to where they were. It was one of the best studies showing that salt is a much lesser factor than fat in high blood pressure. There has been a consensus in treating high blood pressure. The National Institute of Health, the American Heart Association, American Public Health Institute, everybody has agreed that there's one way to treat high blood pressure and that is drug therapy for the rest of your life. Stepped up drug therapy, you start with a single drug. If that doesn't work, there are two drugs, then you go to three drugs, then you go to four drugs, then you go to potassium supplements. It's all worked out. Every physician now gets a copy on how to treat high blood pressure according to the consensus. Yet, how much how much is talked about in the consensus booklet about diet and so on. They do say that you could ask your patient to cut down his salt intake and he could lose weight. Otherwise, nothing is talked about diet. The idea is drug therapy. Now, how effective is drug therapy? First of all, drug therapy for hypertension does not cure hypertension. It doesn't affect the disease in any way. It just paralyzes the body's ability to raise pressure. So one thing that happens is that as you paralyze the body's ability to raise pressure, your blood flow drops. And people have to have a certain amount of blood flow to have normal function. So one of the side effects of hypertension drugs as they lower blood pressure and lower blood flow is sexual impotency. In a study done on men taking the drugs for two years, 50% lost their sexual potency because without blood flow, you don't have erections. How about uric acid level? 
The high potential drugs artificially forced uric acid levels up. Another study, 50% of the men had uric acid levels raised into the gout range. And so they had to then take drugs to lower uric acid level. Well, they took drugs to lower uric acid level, and the principal drugs are xyloprim, benamid, and they created certain kinds of crystals that dig into the muscles and tear the little muscle fibers. Unfortunately, there's no drug to take against that. So that we can't cure drugs with drugs. The side effects are many. The other problems from hypertensive drugs, it can force you into diabetes. The drugs can force you, on occasion, into kidney failure. Now, all these drugs would be acceptable if there was no other way to go. But yet our data and our first 900 patients indicate that of all the hypertensives that have come in, and there's over 200 that were diagnosed hypertensive by their physicians that have been hypertensive for at least a year on medication, they came in with medication. In the four weeks' time, 85% were off their medication with normal blood pressures. Now, even if the 85% wouldn't hold, what if it's only 50%? What if it's only 25%? 25% out of 60 million means that 15 million people would never have to be on drug medication for the rest of their lives if they change their diet. So there certainly is a choice for hypertension.